All You Need to Know, the Bloomberg Quint podcast that prepares you for the day's business. Brought to you by Small Cases. Invest in ready-made portfolios created by professionals. Good morning. You're listening to the Daily Morning Update from Bloomberg Quint and I'm Alex Matthew. For the markets, the week begins in earnest today. Here's everything that you need to know. Today is the 22nd of October. In politics, incumbent Bharatiya Janata Party-led governments are expected to return to power with an even bigger mandate in Maharashtra and Haryana, according to a series of exit polls. In Maharashtra, the ruling BJP Shiv Sena alliance are likely to win well over 200 seats out of 288, according to an average of five exit polls. Last time around, they'd managed to win 185 seats. Haryana too will see the return of BJP's Manohar Lal Khattar. The BJP is expected to win nearly 70 out of the 90 seats, with one poll pegging the number as high as 75. In the previous assembly polls, BJP had 47 seats. Voter turnout dropped in both states though, with just over 60% turning up to vote in Maharashtra as of 6pm yesterday. In Haryana too, there was a sharp drop from the previous election to 65%. In major corporate news, an anonymous whistleblower letter has alleged that Infosys Chief Executive Officer Salil Parekh fudged the company's books, accusations that could plunge the software services provider into its second leadership-related crisis in a little over two years. The letter from a group calling themselves Ethical Employees accused Parekh of unethical practices in recent quarters to boost short-term revenue and profits. Employees were asked not to fully recognize costs like those for visas to improve profits, according to the letter dated the 20th of September addressed to the company's board and the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. SBI Chairman Rajneesh Kumar says that there is a need for a streamlined resolution process for non-bank lenders in India, which would be capable of taking care of multiple concerns simultaneously. Currently, he says, the different regulators and the multiplicity of classes of creditors is posing a challenge in resolving stress in the non-bank financial services segment. India plans to frame rules to regulate social media, citing the danger of unimaginable disruption to democracy and fake news. It is a move that could trigger privacy concerns. The government is likely to finalize the liability of intermediaries, including social media platforms like Facebook, Twitter and WhatsApp, for online content by 15th of January. Here's an update on real estate. Completed houses constitute nearly 12% of the total unsold inventory in India's top seven cities. That's according to Anarok Property Consultants. Nearly 6.56 lakh houses were lying unsold in the top seven cities as of September, according to the consultant who said this in a research report. In international news, expectations are rising for a U.S.-China trade deal to be signed at a meeting next month in Chile between the country's leaders. President Donald Trump says China has indicated that negotiations are advancing. They have started buying, he said on Monday, referring to Chinese purchases of U.S. agricultural products that the president has been pushing as part of the deal. Trump indicated, though, that he expected more purchases. In the UK, Boris Johnson was unable to succeed in his latest attempt to get his Brexit deal approved in Parliament in another blow to his efforts to take the UK out of the European Union in 10 days' time. House of Commons Speaker John Burkow rejected the government's bid to trigger a second parliamentary vote on the Brexit deal the Prime Minister secured last week in Brussels. In international markets, US stocks ended higher on the back of optimism following the perceived progress in trade talks between the US and China. The Dow gained nearly 60 points, while the S&P 500 and the Nasdaq climbed 0.7 and 0.9% respectively. Japanese markets are shut for a holiday today. The other two early risers in Asia 
were trading positive at the open. With that, it's over to Darshan Mehta for the trade setup for the day in India. Good morning, Darshan. How are we looking at the start of the trading week? Hi Alex, good morning. Good morning everyone. Global queues are muted at this point of time. The SCX Nifty is indicating a gap down of almost 40 points. But remember, we were shut yesterday. The SCX Nifty ended up almost 17 points. So, a minor gap down is something that we can anticipate today. But lots of numbers today. Access Bank, Kotak Mahindra Bank, Asian Pains, Bajaj Finance and Bajaj Finserve are the Nifty companies. Among the other companies, there is RBL, Glaxo Pharma, Granules, OBC, Jubilant Foodworks, ICIC Prudential Life, m M&M Financial, India Mart, uh, Siet and Sinjin. Among the numbers announced Reliance, uh, operationally the numbers were below estimates due to a weaker refining performance. The net profit was the highest in the last 15 quarters, while EBIT was the highest ever. Petrochemical numbers were aided by higher volumes. The refining was impacted by lower volumes and lower GRMs. GRM premium to Singapore GRM contracted to the lowest in the last 17 quarters. Retail revenue growth rate was the slowest in the last 13 quarters at least and geo numbers were in line with estimates even though ARPU fell for the 8th straight quarter. HDFC bank results were in line with estimates with stable asset quality and lower taxes that aided profit. The core profit was impacted by moderation in NIM and lower asset growth. Ultratech results were below estimates. Lower than expected volume growth impacted the top line performance. The consolidated volume growth was down almost 1%. Bharti Infratel, the results were above estimates. The numbers were aided by higher exit charges and lower other expenses during the quarter. And during second quarter, on a net basis, 159 tenancies were added. And we have seen an addition for the second consecutive quarter. Among the other numbers, Sri Cement, very strong set of numbers. The realization and freight cost surprise positively and cement volumes were up 1.5% YOY which is better than the industry trend which saw a decline. AU Small Finance Bank results above estimates. Strong results were driven by retail business with stable asset quality. Avanti feeds very strong set of numbers. Lower cost and higher other income aided the numbers but the revenue was aided by strong performance in the shrimp feed business. Ujjivan also strong set of numbers. They have the highest AUM growth in the post demonetization era and MFI loans grew 80% while non-MFI loans grew 2.8 times. Ambuja was weak, uh, volumes were down 4% and that too compared to a drop of 2% for ACC. LNT Tech, the results were in line with estimates but the management has cut the guidance. They have lowered the US dollar revenue growth guidance to 10% from the earlier 12-14%. to 14%. LIC Housing Finance, the earning beat was largely on account of lower taxation. The GNPs rose sharply both on the retail and developer loan. LNT Finance also numbers were below estimates. DCB Bank also there was pressure on the asset quality and the NII growth was weak. Overall realty was weak, or revenues were down 17%, profit was down 35% and slowdown in the business is affecting them. Dalmia Bharat's results were below estimates. Uh, the company volume growth, even though was up 8%, that came in because of poor realization this time around, which was a 10% sequential decline. Just dial, the revenues were affected due to weaker paid listing. Among the other stocks, the stock of the day probably will be Infosys. The whistleblower accuses Infosys of unethical practices to boost numbers. Infosys is saying that they are examining the charges made by the whistleblower. The ADR was down 12%. And a lot of brokerages have indicated that there could be a potential derating that could come in if proved right. Tara Steel Europe has planned a 380 million euro in cost cut. HG Infra, they've received EPC orders worth almost 950 crores from Adani Road Transport. And in terms of some of the brokerages, UBS has downgraded Torrent Pharma, Goldman Sachs has up downgraded Ashok Leyland, and Bofa ML has upgraded DLF, and Morgan Stanley has upgraded Shri Cement. All the details you can read in the copy. But there's much more you need to know before trade actually starts. For that, log on to our website, bloombergquin.com, and click on the All You Need to Know tab, and you will be prepared for morning trade. Thanks, Darshan. And as always, thank you all for listening in. This is Alex Matthew signing off. Have a great day. I hope you enjoyed listening to All You Need to Know. Did you know that you can listen to the show on the IVM Podcast app? 
On the IVM Podcast app, along with this, we have a number of other shows which you think you'll enjoy. Listen to Cyrus Says with Cyrus Brocha as the host. Listen to Pesa Vesa with Anupam Gupta. The Scene and the Unseen with Amit Varma or Shunya One hosted by Shiladitya Mukhopadhyay and myself. Check out the IVM Podcast app to get more talk content that you will enjoy.